Hi guys, happy Friday the 13th. Seriously, it's Friday the 13th. So excited. <laughs> um, I just, I was that girl. I was that girl where I would buy a calendar. I used to have like, uh, every year I would get a calendar and put it in my room. This is like when I was like middle school, teenage years. <coughs> and it would usually be like a cat calendar or something. <laughs> and I used to go through each of the months and see what month has a Friday the 13th in it. Cause usually there's like one or two a year. And, um, and yeah, so it's just so exciting. How come my hair looks so ugly today? What, what is going on here? I sprayed dry shampoo in it and I didn't shake it out. Maybe that's why, I don't know. It's kind of bright in here cause I have the blinds open. My poor Luna, she's right there. <laughs> she likes to look out the window. Um, so <clears throat> Friday the 13th, ow. I'm not superstitious. Um, but I do like Friday the 13th and I just like the whole, you know, idea behind it. Spooky, spooky. So yeah, it would just be 10 times better if we were going through this Friday the 13th when it's like really cold or something, you know? There we go, my hair looks a little bit better. Put this down just a tad. So minimal makeup today, you guys. No face makeup. I just didn't want to deal with that. Um, I have a couple things I need to do today. Well, I have a lot of things I need to do today, to be honest. But I don't think we're having any family over this weekend, I hope. <laughs> so it's just gonna, I'm gonna like kind of um, spread out the cleaning. Like, I think I'm just gonna clean the bathrooms today and then vacuum. And then I'll worry about sweeping and stuff later this weekend because I have the whole weekend off. So why cram it all in in one day, right? Um, so um, it's a full moon and I have an idea. I want well, an idea. I want to cleanse some of my crystals. It's been a long, 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 long time since I've given them a really good cleanse and I really want to cleanse them. And then I have a table Outside in my backyard, it's like a small little, like one of those little patio sets, like a two-seater patio set that um, that I bought when we were living in an apartment because our little patio outside was just big enough for it. Um, so I have it in my backyard and I was like, oh, that would be the perfect little table to put my crystals to, um, to soak up the full moon. And that full moon is super bright like <laughs> last night I was lying in bed with all the lights off and there was this, just, just this constant glow outside as if like as if the sun was out and so it's that full moon and it was, it's just so bright up here in the desert it's beautiful um so I think that's what I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna cleanse my crystals later on today probably make a video out of it so you guys will see that um, and then um, I think I'm gonna wait to do readings till tomorrow, Sunday and Monday because um, I have other things that I need to do. So like, I gotta go to Target. I just have to go to Target. I love going to Target. But I gotta go to Target and um, I need to get heartburn pills because I bummed a couple off of my mom but I'm gonna need some. So I gotta buy that and then I, I need to get like a couple things of makeup. So I don't know if you guys do this but I buy my makeup in bulk. Um, I have found that it saves me unnecessary trips. <laughs> Who's playing this? Luna. I think Starla's playing. Where is she? Oh, you can't see her. There she is. <laughs> um, it saves me unnecessary trips to Target just for like makeup because we all know that that's a dangerous, that's dangerous territory. Like you, you go to Target with a list and you end up with like 25 things plus the things that you didn't even like you, you go to target with a list and you end up with like 25 items in your cart and none of them are on the list so <laughs> so um i have learned my lesson with that and i have found that if i just buy my makeup in bulk um i always have a stockpile to 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 reach Ooh, be nice 
see they fight. Starla likes to go after Luna and then Luna just doesn't want any anything to do with her. Be nice. My Luna. Hi, my baby girl. <laughs> Luna, daddy's coming home today. So um, <clears throat> I always tell her that because she loves daddy. Like, she, daddy's, daddy's her favorite, not me. Um, so, um, I have found that when I buy my makeup in bulk and I have like a stockpile of my favorite pieces that it just makes life so much easier. So, um, I have to buy some brow pencils and some mascara. Like that's on my list. So just those two things. Cause I have another foundation and all that other junk. So I gotta put, gotta get that, gotta get the heartburn meds. Actually, while I'm talking about it, let me just do my list because I'll probably forget and then that would suck. I also, <laughs> I also told myself I need to clean my junk drawer today. I have a junk drawer in the kitchen. Like, I think we all have that. Do we all have that, you guys? <laughs> Where you keep like, like your lighter for your candles and like I have my lighter, I have old like menus and stuff from places that I like to um, order takeout. Um, I have like my folders with the bills. I have the folders with the cat's medical history because <laughs> when I was going to the vet, like it felt like I was going to the vet every single day. Um, I always take their folders, like I'm that kind of cat mom. So I always take their folders and um, and it has their, their history, their medical history. Cause you know, like sometimes the vet will ask you like, oh, when was their last shots and when were they born and this and that. And I don't remember that stuff. So, <laughs> so it just helps me to have like their little medical history folders. Um, okay, so for Target, I always write it, Target. <laughs> Target, I gotta get um, Prilosec. I think that's what it's called. Is it Prilosec? Oh no, it's Omeprazole. What is Prilosec? I think it's the same thing. But I buy Omeprazole. Omeprazole. I don't know how to spell that. Um, and then I need Rimmel Brow Pencil. And um, my um, mascara. I like L'Oreal um, mascara, mascara. The... The, uh, what is it called? Fucking, what's it called? <laughs> it's the black tube with the gold tip. Yeah, that's my favorite mascara. So that, okay, so now I have that. And then I think I'm gonna do, because I only need basics from the grocery store, so I think what I'm gonna do is um, just get some stuff from the grocery area in Target because then I don't have to drive across town to go to the grocery store. Like. When you guys live in the desert, you will understand sometimes you go across town to get to one place and you know, the shopping centers are like spread apart and and up here it's like some shopping centers are a little bit more ghetto than others and I don't like to do that. I don't like to deal with the ghetto ones. Um, so I will drive my ass across town five, six, seven, 10 miles. <laughs> Literally this target that I'm going to is about 10 miles out. Um, but it's side by side Ross and there's a um, Marshall's there. So I want to look at their Halloween stuff. Um, but it's a really clean target and it's big and it's just nice. Like it's really clean and organized. And I went to one, another one up here and it was a disaster. So, um, I will drive my ass a few miles extra to go to a more pleasant shopping experience. <laughs> That's just me. Um, but anyways, so Omeprazole, um, brow pencil, mascara. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I need, but I don't think I need shampoo. I have bottles. I'll have to check what's in my, what's in my bathroom, but I think I'm good with everything else. Oh, I do need sandwich bags. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm filming this. Like you guys are probably sandwich bags. Um, I think I have enough paper plates, but I'm going to write it down just in case. Um, and then, yeah, I can't believe I'm right. <laughs> like you guys really care. Do you guys do that? Like do, who does lists? Does, does any, oh my God, look at my nails. Wow. I was going to take the polish off the, my nails and my toes last night and I totally forgot. So 
wow. <laughs> um, does anyone else do lists or is that just something I inherited from my mother? <laughs> like I literally walk around. So this is how I shop. I have my list and I have a pen with me and I go through every time I get something. Oh, excuse me. I mark it off my list. And if I'm really on a budget, like sometimes you guys, I go to the grocery store and I have like 60 bucks to play with and I'm like, okay, I get paid tomorrow, but I need to have like at least, you know, $10 for me. <laughs> I like to have, give myself something extra, you know? Um, so I'm like, okay, I'll get, I get paid tomorrow or I get paid in a couple days, but I only have this much money to play with, but I really need these things from the grocery store. So if I'm like really budgeting and I need to like make sure I don't go over a, a certain amount, um, I'll write down, like usually on the back of the list, I'll write, I'll be estimating the prices. So like, let's say like the Omeprazole is like $6, I don't know, <laughs> or it's like $5.49, then I'll just estimate high. So I'll go $6 and, that, and I just start adding it up as I go along. <laughs> So then by the time I get into the aisle to pay, I'm like, okay, roundabout, I'm about like $50 in, so my total should be 50 or a little bit less because I round up. Um, and so usually I'm pretty much right on the dot unless I'm like forgetting something or whatever. So <clears throat> I'm that person, like I like to estimate what my total is gonna be um, while I'm shopping and I also like mark things off my list. So yeah, so that's that. Um, out of groceries, well, I guess I won't bore you guys with that much longer. I just wanted to like get those things on there because I know I would forget. Um, so a lot of you guys were, <laughs> a lot of guys were leaving me comments yesterday about the previous video where I was talking about my period being irregular, and um, a couple of you guys had mentioned PCOS, and I actually, and I think I responded to, back to one of you guys, um, but. I did get tested for PCOS back in 20, I think it was 2015, 2016, it was one of those years. Um, and so they ran tests on me, they did um, blood tests, they did, um, I did a sugar test, they did like other tests, I don't know. The only thing she didn't do is give me an ultrasound, which I wish I would have insisted on it, but I didn't think that that, I didn't really think about it at the time, I was just like really nervous about you know, something coming up in my numbers or whatever, because you know, I'm a plus size girl. So anytime I go to the doctor, I'm always freaking out. I think I freak out over the fucking scale. Like the fact that I have to be weighed than like what I'm going in for. If that's sad, you know, like I, I worry about those things. And sometimes I want to tell the doctor, like, I don't want to be weighed. I've even like argued with them before. <laughs> I don't want to be weighed. I weighed myself this morning so I could like really release my anxiety this is how much it is. And so, you know, they, they, they took my word for it there, but sometimes you get some bitchy nurses or whatever they are, the assistants, and they just insist on it. And it's just like, oh. and I don't think like these girls understand how much anxiety comes from having somebody weigh you. And like when you're already not wanting to be weighed in the first place and it's just like, it's, and then you have like someone weighing you and you're just like, oh my God. So it's just a really anxiety, it's like, a, I'm just, it's just full of anxiety for me. But, um, <laughs> so when I went to the fertility doctor, the, she, you know, they weighed me and stuff and um, she tested me for PCOS and, and the tests, oh my God, I remember when these tests, like there was a couple different times, um, I had to go in twice and, um, and then finally, like, they called me. I was at work, and they called my cell phone, and, and the, the, the girl was like, oh, just letting you know that all of your numbers came out. Um, everything's negative. You don't have PCOS. And I was like, okay, but I still don't have a period, so what's happening? <laughs> so um, I never went back to the doctor. I really didn't like her. <laughs> she, um, so I guess, like, okay. So I guess there's like some stuff you could take to jumpstart your, 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 what is it? What the fuck is it called? The, <laughs> I don't think I have one. So that's why I don't know what it's called. Your ovulation, you know, your ovulation stuff. And so she wanted me to go back on birth control to start my period up. And I really didn't want to do that. I told her I don't want to get back on birth control. I just got off of it. I feel like I go cuckoo when I get off my pill. I don't want to go back on it. And so she was saying like to help me, you know, if I really wanted to get pregnant, to help me get pregnant and whatever. 
there was this medicine that I could take to, to help the ovulation and all that stuff. But she didn't want to give it to me because of my weight. And, <clears throat> and I didn't realize at the time that like I could have argued about it because it's my body, you know? Um, but she scared me with what she was saying. And so it really made me feel ashamed and doubtful. And I was like, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't, you know, and now I wish I would have done it because I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like torn between the two things. I want to have a baby, but I don't. And so I feel like because I'm like this, like, I don't know if I want one or not. I, I the idea of doing something that would probably get me pregnant scares me. Ow, stop it. Starla, oh my God, she likes to go after little strings and stuff. I have strings on my shorts. Oh, this cat, she's been... Does anyone want uh, Starla? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, and so like the idea of it kind of scares me and this and that, and um, I don't know you guys. So anyways, all I know is I was a little hurt by what the doctor was saying and it just pissed me off, so it was like, I should have gone back and requested an ultrasound. I should have gone back and requested to have those med that medicine if I really, truly want you know, to try and all that. But I am taking all of that as like the initial, my initial experience, what happened, what I felt, me not being proactive on trying to get that medicine. I'm taking it all as signs that I'm, I'm just not, it's not for me. Um, I went through a time where I was really upset about not being getting not getting pregnant. I went, but I was more upset about not having a period. Um, the pregnancy thing to me is like, if it's meant to be, it's gonna be. Like that's my mindset on it. Um, because <laughs> because I don't even know if I really want to to have a baby. So to me, it's like, if the universe wants me to have a baby, I'm gonna have a baby. But. I'm not doing anything to prevent it. So my husband and I are doing our thing and there's no protection. I'm not on any kind of birth control, absolutely nothing. <laughs> I've been off birth control since 2015, March. Um, and so if, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. And if it doesn't happen, then I've made peace with that because um, Maybe I just don't really want it to happen or maybe it's not meant for me. <laughs> I don't know. It scares me. So um, anyways, um, so, <laughs> but I really want my period. Like I, <laughs> that's the one thing that really bugs me. And I think it's just because it's my period and it's like a part of me and it was, it's been a part of me since I think it was like 12 when I started my period. I was an early bloomer with my body. <laughs> I was that sixth grader with big boobs that everyone would make fun of me for, of having big boobs and stuff. And I had my period in sixth grade. So I think I was 12 in sixth grade, I don't know. And, um, but I just remember constantly being teased for my body um, because I was well developed. And um, finally, like, when the rest of me caught up with my boobs, <laughs> then it was a little bit easier. And then it was like, high school came and I was made fun of and stuff in high school and then like I think my senior year was when all the guys started to notice me and that's when like all the guys wanted to go out with me and you know play with the boobs that everyone would, would make fun of me for <laughs> anyways um so anyways <coughs> I still have wheeziness from my freaking acid reflux attack the other night okay, okay. um so yeah, so the whole period thing, really it does, it bugs me. Like I really miss my period and when I do have it, I realize, okay, you could stay for a little bit, but don't stay for the whole seven days, girl. <laughs> so I do miss my period, but um, I'm, I am just, good. I'm working on the confidence that it, she'll come back and whatever um i think that because a lot of you guys were saying like you know it could be pcos it could be hormones um when they took when they tested me for hormones they tested me for thyroid and all that stuff everything was fine and um <laughs> i mean i don't know now like that was a couple years ago i don't know if it really changes i think my period issues has to do with one i'm a worry wart i'm a very neurotic person if you guys don't know that about me i'm a very neurotic person and neurotic is like I think about the worst cases that can happen. I worry about the most random stuff, like 
things that people probably don't think twice about. I will worry about it. And if you're not gonna worry about it, you could guarantee I'm worrying about it for you. <laughs> That's me. Um, so I've always been a worry wart. I've been, I'm neurotic. I am a stress ball. So I feel like all of those equate to my irregular cycle. Um, I've always had late periods. Like I remember before I got on birth control, um, when I was like 15, 16, 17, because I, I got on birth control when I was 18. Um, but when I was a teenager, I remember um, I would always, because I was, I was sexually active since I lost my virginity at 14. So <laughs> I was sexually active for a long time. Um, and I always had, I was always that girl that had the pregnancy scares, that had the late periods. I went to Planned Parenthood, I don't know how many times. Um, I, I even like, <laughs> if I, if one of my friends had a birth, uh, a pregnancy test, like I had, you know, I had a stash of pregnancy tests. Like I just, I was that girl. <laughs> um, because my period was always late. And so I, I freaked out about it as a teenager. And then as I got older from, from, well, from 18 to however the fuck old I was in 2015, I think I was 29, I was on birth control. So that's a long time. That's 11 years, I think, that I was on birth control. And um, and it messes with your body. And so if I could go back in time, I would not go on birth control. Um, I would not be promiscuous as much as I was. Um, and I would not have dated that first boyfriend. So, <laughs> but we can do that. So we can't go back in time. Um, but for me, my period has just, it's just been one of those things. And so when I was on birth control, I, um, I had, you know, I, I had the, I was taking the pill that gave me a period. Cause I know that there's some birth control methods that don't give you periods, I guess. I don't know. Um, but I had a period every month and it was a very weak period. I didn't have any cramps. It was just like, sometimes I wouldn't even notice that I was on my period because it was so light. Um, <laughs> which is complete opposite of my natural cycle. So when I naturally have a period, and I'm sorry, you guys, if you're watching this and you're cringing, if this is not your topic, like I'll, I'll make sure I have placed an, a warning. <laughs> so those of you guys who are watching this video right now, you you know, you're not, you're not cringing at what I'm talking about, but, um, um, my periods have always been super heavy, seven days straight, heavy flow, probably the first two, three, four days. And then it's like, it tapers off. Um, and then I have massive cramps. I'll have like, I'll break out or I'll be like fucking moody and crying over everything. Or, um, <laughs> there's always something. My PMS changes, my boobs will hurt. It just, just depends on the month. Um, and so, and then my period disappears. And so I've noticed that. And I, I guess like, because I was on birth control for so long, I didn't get to see what my period is really like. And I'm mad at myself for that. So now that I'm in my, you know, 30s, um, I'm becoming more aware of my cycle. I've, this is the sad part too. Um, my parents, my mom is a very conservative woman. She's very modest, very conservative. She doesn't talk about period stuff. Maybe more so now we're more open because we're adults, like I'm an adult now. But when I was a girl growing up, she gave me a very gentle period talk, um, but we, I never had the sex talk from my mom. I never had like, I know I was never able to ask questions about things. So I grew up, I didn't know how to track my period. I didn't know how to cycle it. I didn't even know, I didn't know anything, you guys. <laughs> And, um, and, and this is so sad to admit to like the anatomy of my body, like my womanhood. Um, when I met my husband, um, <laughs> this is so TMI, but he would probably do it live on a video. <laughs> I remember one time, I don't even know me and my husband, we were boyfriend, girlfriend at the time, but we were talking about the anatomy of a woman and my husband, he, he, he embraces that, like that he loves women he loves the body and the whole down there region and so he knows all of the terms <laughs> he knows all of the terms and he could draw a diagram of what it looks like and I'm just like if you were to ask me and him to draw a diagram of what it looks like 
I'm telling you, his would be on point with like, you know, <laughs> like the correct terms and the arrows pointing to all of the parts. And mine would probably just be like, this is the vagina and <laughs> And that's how sad it was. And so um, I always joke about that with him because he did draw my, he drew my vagina. Like, not like a portrait, but like he drew a diagram. Because I asked him, I was like, so what is this and what's that? And he drew like everything. So he had like the ovaries and everything. <laughs> And so he um, he did that one time and I was busting up laughing because I thought it was really funny. But he's just like... He's a smarty pants, you guys. My husband is like a little square. And um, and the fact that he knows all that stuff and it's not even his anatomy <laughs> is really funny. So, um, sorry, I gotta clean my nose. Um, but I think that all had to do with the fact that I grew up not being talked to. It just wasn't something we talked about or, you know, it was always hush hush and quiet quiet. So I wish that I had a different, <laughs> I wish I had a different upbringing with that because um, I feel like I could have I would I could have benefited from knowing a little bit more about my body. Um, and you know, like how like when you take those sex ed classes and they tell you to look at yourself in the mirror to be f familiar with your body. I never did that, and I still to this day, <laughs> I still to this day don't really know what she looks like down there like like I have an idea but I don't really have an idea you know <laughs> and I think it just has to do with just like I was never taught to be I was never comfortable with my body because of the way my parents were my way my mom was growing up with me growing up it was also it was all about like cover up your don't have your cleavage show and close your legs and don't wear long or short stuff and so I was really like <laughs> uncomfortable with my body and so as I've been growing up and becoming my own person um in my 20s you know I became to be a little bit more loose about my girls and more loose about like my body and I was always sexually active and I think that it was like I was I was sexually active but I was blind to my own body I don't know if that makes sense and now though in my 30s I'm more appreciative of my body although my body is way different the way it looks and the size of it than it was when I was like, you know, 20. <laughs> but <clears throat> I have a lot more per, um, appreciation for my body and a lot more respect. And, um, and yeah, and I remember, like I really looked at my body <clears throat> recently, like in the mirror, you know, like have you ever, got, have you guys ever done that? Like you stand naked in the mirror and you just kind of like, you're looking at yourself. I, I've done that and yeah, I wasn't happy to see like, you know, my apple, my, my apple, for those of you guys who don't know, my apple is like my stomach region. <laughs> um, I'm an apple shaped girl. I have like, I uh, carry a lot of my weight <clears throat> in my belly. So um, it's just there. I have a belly, a big belly, my apple. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't like to see that like when I'm like looking at myself, but at the same time, looking at, really looking at myself and seeing what my husband sees when he looks at me naked is, it has helped me <clears throat> appreciate myself a little bit more and love myself when I can identify my flaws and all that. Wow, this video has really gotten like full circle. <laughs> um, so... I don't even know what like the whole point of this video is, but I guess I'll just post it anyway because I'm sure some of you guys would like to hear it. Um, but yeah, you guys, so <laughs> my body, <laughs> I'm like getting uncomfortable. I'm like sitting on these little stools. My ass is like big and the stool is like so small. So it like hurts my butt after a while. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, womanhood, bodies, um, love, self-love, love yourself, all of that. I am all about that. And I gotta say, um, I may be twice the size I was back in high school, but I love myself 10 times more than I did back then. I have so much more appreciation. But yeah, I think the whole point I got on this subject was because I was answering a question one of you guys was like asking, saying something about PCOS. <coughs> The other thing I want to say before, actually, I'm going to stop. No, I won't stop this video because it's already half an hour. In. Oh my God, it's already been 29 minutes. 
it goes by so fast. Um, I, cause I got to blow my nose, but I'm not going to do it on camera. Um, so <laughs> the last thing I'm going to say is actually, you know what? Let me blow my nose. Cause it's going to bug me and I, I have a lot to say. <laughs> Sorry guys. I'm going to do it off camera. I always do that. Like I blow my nose before I start a video, but, um, <clears throat> I have so much like morning allergies that I feel like when I talk more it's like all the mocos so want to come out of my nose so anyways um oh, this I hope I don't break this stool <laughs> okay um the other thing I wanted to do I wanted to talk about on this video and I'll probably do timestamps so people can just like jump ahead um is <clears throat> okay for tarot readers, okay? So do you guys ever have this issue? Um, and I try not to be guilty of this, but I know I've, I've mentioned it in some readings for clients, um, where when you're reading for someone who is in their, the, of the age of childbearing, um, when people constantly bring it up in readings, like, okay, like, so for me, I'll ask for a reading or I'll get a reading done from somebody and I'm not blaming anyone. Like I'm not doing any of that. But um, if I get a reading from somebody, nine times out of 10, the topic of pregnancy comes up in my reading. Um, and I don't know if it's just because that's what the cards are saying or if it's because the person just assumes that because I'm in my 30s that, you know, maybe I want to have a baby. I don't know. And I know I have been guilty of that too where that topic will pop up in a reading for a client. Um, and, and it may not be part of their question. And so I'm really learning or teaching myself to not do that. Um, I do, I am the kind of reader though, like if I do see something in your reading, I will say it because to me, that's like sometimes it's, it's a message you need to hear. But I don't like draw out the whole topic of pregnancy or whatever if that's not even part of your initial question. Um, but I will mention it. So I'm really trying to change my reading style with that with that topic because I notice that when I get readings for myself, if there's if it's always geared towards oh you know you may have a baby this year, I mean I I, I welcome it like it's like okay if the, if that's genuinely the message of the cards um, then fine, but it kind of bugs me if um, if it's automatically assumed that oh Rose wants to have a baby or I should read for Rose having a baby, you know, because to me, it's like, yeah, I, I would like to have a baby. I, I, I see myself having a daughter, you know, me and my husband see ourselves having a daughter, but I don't want to like define my entire existence on a baby, like on trying to have a baby because that's not what I want. Um, that's not how I want to live my life, you know, my thirties. <laughs> To me, the baby topic is there. It's, it's, if it happens, it's gonna happen. If it doesn't happen, it's not meant for me to have a baby. Like that is honestly how I am approaching the situation. One, because I'm a plus size girl and the plus size-ness in me, the plus size-ness, <laughs> my size, my weight can change because I can actively do things to lose weight to try and have a baby, right? But it's not gonna happen in the blink of an eye and it ain't happening in a month. So to me, it's like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tear myself apart to try to be like, like to try to lose so much weight for a baby. And then it, what if it doesn't even happen? Like, what if it's not my body? Like, what if it's not my plus sizeness? Cause there's so many plus size women who have pregnancies. There's plus size women who have regular cycles. It is, it, it, it's like the, the topic of like your weight could possibly be the reason why I made, my weight could possibly be the reason why I'm not having a period. But when I think back on my cycle before I got on birth control, my cycle was all over the place too. Um, so maybe it is, maybe it isn't. <laughs> I don't know, but um, I, I also don't want my, my life defined or my readings to always be defined on, you know, is Rose going to get pregnant? Is Rose going to have a baby? It's, it's sweet and I, and I don't mind it, but when, when every single time when I get a reading, if that's always the topic that's being read for, I don't like it. I don't like it. It actually kind of offends me sometimes and it, it kind of bugs me. So 
that's another thing I wanted to bring up is that um, just because you're reading reading for somebody who is of the age of childbearing, which is like, I don't know, 20 through 40, 45, whatever, doesn't mean, or pretty much like for a whole fucking life, you know, <laughs> um, doesn't mean that we always want that, you know? So I'm really trying to, to, to be aware of my own readings that I do for people because I have been guilty of that in the past. And, um, and it's something I wanted to mention because I was talking about babies and talking about pregnancy and talking about fertility and talking about all that stuff. So I thought it would be good to fit in. So yeah, um, I would love to get a reading for myself that has nothing to do with pregnancy for once. Um, I'm always like, when I, when I get readings for myself, it's always like, oh, I want, you know, en energies of what's going on with me. And yeah, I can understand, okay, the pre pregnancy stuff can come up in that, but I'm not looking for an answer. I'm not looking for, oh, when am I going to get pregnant? I'm not looking for that. Um, so I don't know if that's like miscommunication with me and the people I ask readings of, or, <laughs> or it's just, maybe they just see my videos or something. They see a post where I talked about wishing I got pregnant and then they automatically think, that I'm one of those people where I'm like, that's all I want. And it's like, it's part of there, like it's there. It's something I would like. I would embrace it if it happens, but I'm not gonna kill myself over not getting it. So it's just like, it's just one of those things. Um, it's a touchy subject for me because, because it's like, sometimes I, I'll go down that dark road of thinking like, is it my fault that I can't get pregnant because I'm overweight, because I'm plus size? I did that to me, like I did that to myself. So did I literally fuck my chances up of having a baby? I, I Sometimes I can go down that road, but then I remind myself of all these beautiful plus size mothers out there and these beautiful plus size women who have pregnancies and have babies. And it's like, no, it's possible. Like just because I'm plus size doesn't mean I can't have a baby. Like that's just ridiculous. And, and it pisses me off when I think about the doctor that refused to give me medicine because not well, I don't know if it was, we would call it medicine, but refused to give me the the, <clears throat> the treatment to ignite my ovulation and all of that um, because I was of a certain weight. And that was her decision, but it's my body. So it does piss me off, but that was years ago. And so I'm just like, well, <laughs> maybe it just didn't happen for a reason. That's like the way I have to think because otherwise I'll just get depressed. Um... So yeah, and then I don't know you guys, like I enjoy, I enjoy my marriage. Like I love my husband. I don't know if you guys know that, but I love my husband and I love our marriage and I love, I love my time with him. And I always wonder like if we had a baby, would we, what would our marriage look like? You know, would we still be like in love? Like would we still be happy or would we be exhausted and tired or would, would our time together be different? Because obviously we would have another little one to take care of, you know? And so I think about those things too. And um, and I, when I'm at work, you know, I see families, there's always moms there with their babies. And I'm always like, oh, I wish I could take, you know, my little baby if I had one <laughs> to story time or take them to the library and check out books for them and stuff. Like I think about things like that. But then I also see um, some parents that are just like, they look so exhausted, they look so tired and they're frustrated with each other and they're fighting, even in, in the library, they're fighting and the kids and, so then I think, oh my gosh, like <laughs> that would change me and my husband's marriage too. So I just think about a lot of things, but um, I don't know. I, I love my marriage. I love my time with my husband. And I think that's also, I think because him and I were late bloomers, we got married late, we got married, literally when I was 29 going 30 um we moved out when I was 29 going 30 like we're late bloomers you know I barely I've been barely living alone in a house for the last six months and then prior to that we lived alone in an apartment for two years but other than that like we've been living with my parents or in our own <laughs> with our own families and so I think because I was a late bloomer and we got married later and this and that, that I want my time with him and I want to enjoy living in my own house and all of that and not have, not have kids. But then it's also like, I think about the time frame and it's like, well, technically, yeah, we do lose time. Well, the clock is ticking for, for us, you know? So it is kind of frustrating, but, um, 
But then you hear about these miracles of like women who are like in their late 30s and they get pregnant, you know, and then it's just like the simplest, the easiest pregnancy and they have the most beautiful baby and it's just like, that could be me, you know, maybe I will be one of those women. I don't know. Um, but I guess it's just like, be careful when you're doing readings for women because if they don't ask you for a pregnancy reading or like they, they don't, they don't bring that up in their question, you be very careful on how you deliver that message if the message comes up in the cards and if your intuition is hitting you about it because not all the time we want to hear it. Okay, you guys? So anyways, this is 40 minutes long. I'm going to go upload the video so that I can start getting ready to go to Target um, and I will talk to you guys later. I invite you guys to leave comments below. Um, sorry this video is kind of long <laughs> and sorry that the subject matter was a little bit maybe uncomfortable for some of you. But I, I don't know, it just came out. That was, I guess, ovulation, period, sex, womenhood, blah, 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 was the topic for today. It's a full moon. So yeah. All right, you guys, love you. Talk to you guys later. Bye.